Hi, and welcome to my review for yeah. The Legend of Heroes yeah. Trails into Reverie. First and foremost, I just want to thank Nisa for a review copy of this. Um, just for the purpose of providing um, content for this and to give my first opinions. Um, I am going to aim to yeah. keep this spoiler free. All the footage that you see is going to be from the PS5 version, from the Leave first chapters of each character's story. So I'll just keep an eye out. I'll try to keep it spoiler free, but I can't guarantee that. Don't give in! Thanks. So a little bit of my history with the Trials series. So back in winter of 2013, I heard a lot of people talking about Trail of Cold Steel um, very positively. So um, that year, Christmas, I got a gift card for GameStop, so I decided, okay, why not give it a shot? I've heard a lot of positive things about it. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? It's my turn. I honestly enjoyed it. Um, from that point, I decided, okay, I looked into the series, it has a whole bunch of other games. I saw that on the PSP at the time because that was relevant. Um, they had Trails in the Sky, so I gave that a shot. I wasn't really a huge fan of it, just because it's a very slow-burning series. So it takes a little bit to get started. I finished it, and then... I'm like, okay, I like this series, and then I just continued on. Anyway, so Trails into Reverie released on July 7th, 2023 in North America, and I believe Europe has it on the same date. Uh, it got releases on the PS4, PS5, PC, and Nintendo Switch. Um, it's great, <laughs> but I'll go more into detail on that. So as for the story for this game, it the plot takes place over three separate yeah. character oh. storylines. You have Reen from the Cold Steel series, you have Where's Lloyd from the Crossbell <gasps> duology, and then you have a mystery, a mystery character, C. Um, it gets revealed further on. I won't go into details about much about C, just due to it's a huge spoiler. Like, that's yeah. for the first half of the game. Like, it's, okay, who is this mysterious character that you're playing as? It's my go. Um, yeah. So as for the plot of this game, um, I don't suggest jumping into it right next. away, uh, only because it has it. It's essentially a Crossbell three or a Cold Steel five. Um, it takes place after Cold Steel four, um, after the whole big plot thing there. Um, don't want to spoil that either. <laughs> um, but it focuses on Crossbell's reindependence, which is like Here's it's an overarching shot. story of. The Crossbell duology. You're um, done for. Eat this. As I stated, yeah, there's a little bit of a mystery aspect with who the third storyline character is. We're in to go. Personally, I had an assumption, and then I had another assumption, right. then I had another yeah. assumption, and it ended up it being the turn. first assumption. So it's not some. It's oh, not it's straightforward. I personally, when I started playing this game, I had literally just came off of playing Cold Steel 4. Like, as in, I finished Cold Steel 4, like, two days prior. So, everything was fresh in my mind. So, I would suggest playing them before you do this. Because it might be a little bit confusing. Um, as for the story, it does close up a few loose ends from Cold Steel 4. Um, not the ones you want, but mostly like character arcs like gives them a little bit of closure because this is the last game that features the cast from cold steel 4 so far I can fight. um there are a couple Turn. other games further on but they're not done yet so um as for the gameplay mechanics um Perfect. essentially you're looking at cold steel 3 and 4 uh it uses the same interface um it Turn. uses the brave order system However, it does introduce something new called United Fronts. Mm. So United These Fronts, no you need to have at least five yeah, characters in your party. And then you have an option. You have Just one that will heal your whole party forward. and give defense buffs. Or you have a magic, which will give you um, like ATS buff. And then it'll also give you uh, ADF, which is basically magic attack and defense Let's get buff. It as well as using all of the characters in your party to do a magic attack. And then you have an attack one, which is the same as magic, except instead of um, magic and 
attack and defense, it's physical attack and defense. Um, whenever you use one of those, uh, you get two brave points, which can be used for orders. Um, you can buff it so that you get more BP and you do more damage or more healing, um, but I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, as for customization, it's the same as the Cold Steel games. Um, you get an orbment. Each orbment gives a certain ability. It could be evade plus, it could be new magic attacks, it could be strength buffs. However, it does go a little bit further and beyond go. because instead of just the two Target. slot levels in your orbments, you now have a third slot level, which also leads to having even higher level courts for your magic attacks or whatever buffs you want. Um, which I've noticed you get quite a bit more in this for stats. It's a little bit strange. It's my turn. But though the game is a little bit shorter, so it, it makes Damn. sense. Um, in the same sense, accessories got nerfed a little bit. Like, for my example, team. the Passionate Rouge in Cold Steel 3 and 4, they also gave they gave 500 attack, like physical attack, and then they also gave, I think it was burn protection. Um, however, in this game, that specific out, accessory gives 250, and that's because there's an additional level on top of that. Um, you can get a true Passionate Rouge or a true Deep Ochre or something like that, which has even higher stats. So it's not as easy to get overpowered in this one as it was in Cold Steel 3 and 4. That was my main concern with those games, because they were very, very overpowered. And like the end of the game was very simple, albeit I was playing it on normal, so it's a l probably more difficult on Nightmare, I'd assume. Um, but yeah, so it's a little, it's a little. I found it a little bit more difficult until like maybe the last. 20% of the game, in which case I was very overpowered at that point, so I was just flying through everything. Um, Here we go. So the graphics, it, this is a hot button, yes. button issue with so many Trails fans. It is not graphically amazing. Like, I was playing it on PS5, but it's very obvious that it was a PS4 game. Um, like, they're a little bit better in Cold Time Steel out, than Cold Steel. But it's more of the same. It doesn't look amazing. However, I did notice that it doesn't use the repeated motions. Like when you have your cast talking to each other in Cold Steel 1 to 4, they just repeat the same motions over and over. It seems a little bit different and a little bit more in touch. It's not always an isometric camera angle anymore. It's always like it's moving around Very and well. the characters feel more alive as opposed to robots. Like it's not amazing, but it's not terrible. But like it. it's, it's much better. It felt it's my turn. much more higher quality than Cold Came Steel 1 before. Um, for the music. <laughs> okay, so since there are three different storylines, they. I shall go. So the storylines have different music. Each piece of music, it gets better and better. Numerous times while I was playing this, I thought to myself, this is the best music in the series. And then it happened again. And then again. <laughs> and then again. So it was really good. It kept on getting better. Some of the boss themes are, they're absolutely amazing. Now, this isn't a shock. Engaging. Because... Falcom JDK, um, the band that does all the music for all the Ease Don't games, move. all the Trails games, and anything Falcom. They're amazing. They have some of the best Got music no in anything. Like, I absolutely adore it. And this just did so much better. Like, I, as I'm playing the game, I'm just like, I want to hear the next theme because... It's different. It's great. I, I loved it. It was so good. Um, so for world building in this, it's not substantial. Um, there's not very much of it. Like it does do a few things, but nothing that really contributes to the whole like universe of Zamiria. It's it relies on knowing the backstory of 
the Cross Spell games and the Cold Steel games. Kind of a little tiny bit because with um, um, the Burl, like the Trails in the Sky games, not so much. I mean, Joshua and Estelle are in the game, but they're. It doesn't really go into details about it. They talk about it a few times, but they don't go into details about it. Um, I would not suggest playing this game if you haven't at least played the Crossbell Duology or the Cold Steel games. Um, if you must, because this continue. game does not have a backstory. Um, it doesn't have an option. Either watch something that goes into details or play them yourself. I highly suggest you play the other games in the series because they are some of the best storytelling I've ever experienced in any RPG. They're they're great. Um, uh, yeah, so as I stated, it focuses on Crossbell. Um, as for side quests, um, Everyone so ready? Trails into Reverie introduces something called the Reverie Corridor. Now, this is not the Reverie Corridor from Came Cold Steel down. 1. It's entirely different. So every quarter is an optional dungeon that is randomly generated. My turn. It lets you recruit characters through a gacha type system that are only to be used in that dungeon. Um, and the Reverie Corridor is mostly used for powering up your abilities as well. So, for example, you can get uh, more bra max brave points. You start at My five, turn. I believe. You start at five, and then you can max out at eight. Um, same with the assault gauge. You start with two. You, I don't know what you need to max out at. Sure. Um, as for the side quests, they've gotten rid of like the bracer points or the academic points from, uh, or the detective points from Crossbells, Trails in the Sky, anything like that. So it's not so much. Engaging. There's not as many side quests. Like, you can still talk to people, and you can still get things like, you can get the books that are in every single one, which, please read them. They give backstory. They're so worth it. So I guess that goes back to the world building. But anyways, yeah, so there's no real side quest in getting them up there. They do have something called RP. Now, sure. RP is the same sense as, like, the bracer points or the academic points. Um, as you get a higher amount, you hit a certain level, and then you get a reward um however it's not meant to be done in the first playthrough the max is 500 right. by my first playthrough i think i had something like 150 or 160 so you can carry them over between playthroughs um so that helps out um now in the reverie corridor as well as you can only a lot of characters that are not part of the story you can actually play all the mini games in there. So you have Palm Party from Cold Steel 3 and 4, Vantage Masters as well. I think Blade is in there as well. Don't quote me on that. Um, admittedly, I didn't spend very much time in the Reverie Corridor. Um, it forces you to go in there three times through two or three times with because of the plot. But other than that, I didn't focus. Um, I should because you do get you can drop um, experience items Let's go. because you have stupid amounts of characters. I think there's like 35 or 40 playable characters in that. Cut through. Um, now. When you go through the Reverie Corridor, every it's enemy mine. in there has a Monster. chance to drop Azure Droplets. Azure Droplets give you 10,000 experience. Right. There's also Fire Grand Fire. Azure Droplets, which are 25,000. So, if you're not using a character and they fall behind a little bit, you can use these to sure. match your level. And you can only use them to level up to the same level as the highest character in hey, your game, you. like in your party. So say you have Lloyd at level 151. You can't use Azure Droplets on anybody else to get them higher than that level. So it, they're there. It's helpful for balancing out your party, but you can't use them to get ridiculously over leveled, which is nice. Um, so as for the length and pacing, the pacing is really good in this. That was one of my complaints with the Cold Steel games. Sure. And like most of the Trails games, honestly, the pacing is it's excellent. You don't feel like you're in like a down period. It's it's steady. It doesn't slow down. Let's continue. Uh, as for the length of the game, coming off of Cold Steel three four, it's much shorter. Um, Cold Steel three. Clocked in at There's 120 hours. Right Cold Steel 4, I clocked in 145 hours. 
Trials into Reverie took me 60 hours. Um, so, honestly, that's at sweet spot. That's one of my concerns with the Trails games, is when you start playing them, you're in for a long trip. Like, 140 hours, Stop like, right yes, there. the games are great, but they're long. <laughs> And you're going to be playing them for a very long time. And in this day and age where we have a great game coming out every two weeks, having a game over 100 hours while it's a great world, sometimes it's just too much. I feel like Trails into Reverie has the sweet spot. Um, nothing to really complain about. It's, it's great. It doesn't overstay. It's welcome. You get a great story. It was very it's emotional, a stuffed animal, silly. but yeah, it's, it's, it's one of my special ones. Um, so as, as far as like character development and relationships, the? um, it relies on you knowing the relationships. It does let you, it doesn't transfer over your save file from Cold Steel 4, but it asks you, Hey, who did you do your final bonding event one. with? Um, I did it with get Emma because three. Emma is best girl, Let's get them fighting down the IRL. Okay. Um, like, there's a few characters that do get some. It, this game does introduce, in Seas Root, um, three new characters. Swin, Nadia, and Lapis. Swin and Nadia get touched upon, but not really fleshed out. Like, you hear a little bit of their backstory, but it doesn't go into it, really. I'm hoping, in some sense, like, it does... You get more details about it. Because I was like, oh, these characters are neat. Oh, I like that kind of backstory. But then it just stopped. Yeah. And it didn't go into details about it. Now, I know Trails games kind of go into detail about a lot of that. Um, yeah. Like, in future games. But considering this is Ready? the last game with the, in this arc of like Cold Steel with these characters. Because the next one is Kuro no Kiseki. Huh. Um... Which is in Calvert, which is totally separate. Um, so it's like, okay, is this all you're gonna do? Are you gonna do like some like spin-off side game that focuses on them or something? Because I want to know more. I want to know the details. Um, so I yeah. Um, all right. So for replayability, Game Plus, where you can carry almost everything over. Um, great for trophy hunters. Um, it doesn't use bonding points, so that's great. Um, I think you can do it all in one playthrough. Um, you might need to do multiples to max out the RP. Um, They're open. So after you complete the game, end game content. We all love end game content. You played through the game, you got the story done, and you're like, I want more. I want to play more. Okay. Um, so the Reverie Corridor, after you beat the game, it opens up a whole new stratum in one to three. Um, so stratum, one, two, three, and then the first half of four opens up before you beat the game. Stop. After you beat the game, you save your clear Be file. Careful. You now have another section to go through. Um, there. It gives you more difficult enemies, more difficult bosses. It lets you level up. Um, and then there's a fifth stratum. Once you finish the fifth stratum, it offers a bonus cutscene that ties into the next game in the series. There's your world building. You have more. And it's... It's my turn. These cutscenes, I both love them and I hate them. <laughs> because it's like, okay, yeah, we find out more about the world. And then it's like, oh my god, now I need the next game. Give me it now. I shall go. Um, but yeah, so Trails into Reverie, I honestly loved my time with it. Um, it, it scratched a lot of itches. I loved having more time with the whole Crossbell team. Um, Blade is great. He's, you know, just a regular detective. He's just a regular person. He's just a police officer. But it just, it closes up the whole Crossbell being independent stage. And it's just, it feels really nice. Have you played the game yet? Um, I would love to hear more. So please let me know in the comments below. Um, 100% suggest this game. It's such a blast. Um, yes, it's a fan service game, but it does it well. I don't feel bad about it. But yeah. So, if you enjoyed my review, hit that subscribe button, give me a like, leave a comment. 
If, even if you didn't, leave a comment telling me how much you hate my review. It's... I'm just looking to get into this. Um, you can always catch me on the weekends. I do stream at twitch.tv slash shinky. Um, if you check out the description, I will have a link there. Um, so next, until next time, keep playing those games, and I will I'll see play. you later. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. It's my turn.